guys, how's it going? So today I wanna to give you a tour of the flower beds that are directly in front of our gazebo. I've recently just planted them up all brand new with new stuff and I'm really enjoying it. The layering is coming out perfect. I'm trying out a lot of new plants in this area. In fact, there's some plants that aren't even out until next year that I was able to trial. So I just wanna go like plant by plant and show you what I've got going in this bed. You might remember that we had a great big ash tree that was planted right here. It was here when we moved in and it had borer damage so bad that every year we were losing big chunks of the tree and eventually I had to cut that tree down really, really small and eventually we just decided to remove it and plant something new. Um, so this is right where the trunk was. So we went ahead and planted a new shade tree right here. This is a linden, it's called a green spire and it will grow into a nice good size shade tree right here. And I do like that it's a little bit further away from the roof of the gazebo um, and it's got nice big foliage and it's just, they're not disease or insect prone in our area. And that's kind of what we're trying to do is transition everything into plants that can handle our environment without needing to be treated a whole bunch. So right here, we'll start with the boxwood. Uh, cone boxwood his, was here when we moved in and we've just been kind of maintaining it. They're starting to get a little bit fluffy here midsummer. Um, we won't start trimming those until it cools off kind of toward fall. And then right here, I've got a little quick fire hydrangea, which I just popped in the ground this spring. Um, it's got a few little blooms on it, which I'm excited about, but I think it'll be beautiful in this spot. It gets a good block of morning sun, but then it gets a little bit of protection in the afternoon. Right below it, we have Pentas, which this is the first time I've ever grown them. I think the common name is an Egyptian star flower. And this is Pentas Sunstar Rose, which will be available next year. And I just think they're so striking and it could just be because we've got some great color around it. We've got Vertigo Penicetum right here, which are an amazingly fast growing, huge statement making annual grass. Like if you have a big space you need to fill for something, like just pop some of these in. You can get them in little four inch cans and they'll grow into this in no time. Um, but I think that the contrast between the bright blooms of the Pentas and the dark foliage of the Vertigo is really nice. And then we have a sweet potato vine called Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime. Um, and I recently just popped one, an extra one in here. I don't know how I had that gap, but I had planted five. Four of them grew really close together. I had a little gap and then I had my fifth one here. So I just filled in the space, I mean, just like a week ago and then popped a couple more in for a little extra chartreuse green. Right below the vertigos and around the linden, I've got a new echinacea coming out next year called Yellow My Darling. And this spot, I'm gonna have to work on the irrigation because it gets a lot of water right here just from the grass sprinkler overlap. Um, and echinacea tend to like it a little bit more on the dry side. So that's something I'm gonna probably need to address fairly quickly. But you can see the beautiful kind of buttery yellow color, which I love. I think that's really pretty. And I've got uh, several of them here, just a nice drift around the base of this tree. I do have an evergreen in here. It's a Procumbens blue spruce, which they just kind of, I mean, it may grow up about this tall, but they grow more low. Um, and it's something that grows super slow so I can keep it kind of controlled in this area. And then we've got an allium, which provides us a nice grassy texture, but it's like a nice sagey, cool green. Um, and it's, did I say it was called serendipity? It's out next year and it had beautiful purple blooms on it. You know, like a miniature version of the great big alliums that you see. Anyway, I planted five of them right in here and I'm excited to see what they do. But I did a lot of repeat planting on either side of our sidewalk that comes out of our gazebo. This is Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Red Sweet Potato Vine. I just had this little space, so I popped three of those in there and they're growing great and they look beautiful up against this Golden Dreams Coleus, which is going to be uh, one that I repeat. Um, there's a couple coleuses that I always like I save space for them. Golden Dreams is a new one that I'll be planting every year. Um, I mean, this right here, that, that's one plant, one four inch plant right there. Uh, and I just think that the foliage is beautiful. It really shines um, and it's a good space filler. The other one I love is Ridiculous. So something that's uh, really solid red. And I plant that in specific areas of my landscape. Um, you'll see there is a North Pole Arborvita Spiral. I did plant this one, I think it was the first summer we were here. We tore out everything that was in here, um, except for the tree, um, because there was a huge, like huge viburnum that was growing up over the roof. You couldn't see into the gazebo. It was just way too big. Anyway, the North Pole Arb was pretty much the only thing left, I believe, in this area, other than the boxwood. 
and all the rest of this is new. You'll see some Boscobel roses, which are a really pretty full cupped, multi-petaled rose. There's five of them in here. This is their first year, so they're quite small, but they will grow up about this big and they'll fill in this area and they'll be a taller layer than the coleus if I were to repeat the coleus again. Um, and then I planted, back planted the coleus with this new uh, salvia for next year called um, Rockin' Blue Suede Shoes, I believe. We will correct anything that I say wrong. There's so many new varieties, it's hard to remember all the names. This one is just gorgeous. It looks beautiful with the pink of the roses. I think the uh, contrast of the foliage with the coleus is beautiful. It's been blooming nonstop since I planted it. So definitely one that I will want to plant. It's kind of like the rocking, uh, rockin' play in the blues. I love that salvia. This one has a little bit of a different bloom. It just has a little bit of a different look to it. Right behind that, so my very back layer is ginger wine nine barks, which those grow about five to six feet tall and wide. So I have two of them right here that I'm gonna kind of keep. I'll let them grow a little bit higher than the railing there, but not much because I still wanna be able to see through the gazebo. Um, and then right below me here, we've got Purple Illusion Veronica, which is a new one next year. So a lot of these are just like add to your list for next year um, because they are amazing performers so far for me. Um, I love Veronica. I love anything that has the spire type bloom, but I think they look especially beautiful with the pink of the rose. They look beautiful with the coleus here. Um, and so I'm excited to see these kind of um, stool out a little bit and fill up this area and be a nice tight drift. We've got a gem box ilex right here, which I didn't actually plan on planting these, um, but we put in this brick pathway, you know, Aaron and I uh, did earlier this year, and it just seemed like it was too abrupt or something. And I needed to plant something that was evergreen that could kind of grow over the edge of this walkway uh, eventually, cause not, you know, this one's even smaller than this one, but eventually, you know, kind of tightly grown all the way down to the brick so that the edge edges or the corners of this walkway kind of disappear and that way it doesn't seem quite as abrupt. Then we've got a skyrocket penicetum right here, which is a beautiful grass with the white variegation, so it really shows up well. I mean, look at this grouping. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, the sun's gonna start to come out now. Um, but I just love that. I honestly could have maybe put a couple in here to kind of fill in either side of the sidewalk. Um, in the containers, I put pyrocantha spirals, <laughs> which, Hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done that, but I was kind of trying to get some containers done uh, for an event we had going on here at the house. And I wanted something that kind of mirrored the spirals on the corners and I couldn't find the proper sized evergreen spirals. So I went with these, they were in full bloom, um, white blooms on them. But now, you know, once the blooms are gone, you're left with kind of the brown, the brown leavings. Um, and which, you know, I could spend some time and get all of those off, but they will be followed by orange berries. So they'll have bright orange berries for fall, which will be pretty, um, but they don't have quite the tight appearance and the, the solid appearance that I kind of like for containers. But below it, I put more Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime. There's Supertunia White Charm, White Knight Sweet Alyssum, and Superbina White Out. I think that those, that was a good choice. Putting white right here really sets them apart from everything else going on in these beds. So on this side, I have quite a few of the same things, except I did a different rose. This one's called Carding Mill, and it's got more of a peach tone, which I almost like better with the Golden Dreams in terms of like cohesion, color cohesion. I think that's really pretty. I've got more rockin' blue suede shoes back here with another ginger wine nine bark. Now, the interesting thing, not interesting, the sad thing, is that our drip system for this bed comes from this side and it goes right kind of underneath the bricks. We put in a valve right here that I could turn on or off if I needed to, and I forgot to turn it on. So here we were, like this bed was growing great. This one was kind of struggling, and I was like, what is going on? Well, I figured out I didn't turn the water onto it. Um, so this one, there's a few plants that are a little bit smaller toward the back, like the salvias back here. They're healthy and doing great. They'll probably catch up, but they're just a tiny bit behind right now. Another gem box Ilex with the purple Illusion Veronica here. And I hope you can see with how bright the sun is, but look at the carding mill with the golden dreams. I think that's just so beautiful. Now, these roses, again, will get quite a bit taller. Whew, one of them's needing to be deadheaded. Um, and the 
flowers will get bigger once they're established a little bit more. Then I've got some more serendipity alliums right here, which I'll throw a picture. I did take a whole bunch of pictures when they were in bloom so you can see what the blooms look like in full color. Um, right up here, I've got a lollipop crab apple, which I wanna keep in a lollipop shape. I think it'll grow like 10 by 10 if I just let it to its own devices, but I'll keep it shorn down and keep a little bit more formality to it. But I'll get some really beautiful white blooms in the spring and then it'll be followed by some berries um, in the fall and winter. Right below that, I've got a sky, another skyrocket penicetum, which I'm not sure that you can see right now because it's a little bit short. You can see it from my angle. Um, and then next to that, a diamond lake costa, which I had this like little random spot, didn't have enough coleus to finish. And I thought, well, this spot gets a, enough shade, I think, to handle a nice, bold textured hosta. So I'm excited about that, bringing that icy blue color. Another North Pole Arborvita right here, which I need to desperately clean the cobwebs off of. Mercy. Right now, we're just like in full maintenance mode for cobwebs and all kinds of bug issues. And then the last thing here, Purple Chablis Lamium. Um, perfect, beautiful ground cover that I love. I could have Lamium all over the place. So. Anyway, that pretty much sums up the gazebo tour as it stands right now. It'll be interesting um, to show you guys how this area evolves because I did use quite a number of um, annuals um, just to fill in space. You know, I have a lot of shrubs and roses and things that will grow good size, but first years are tough. You know, you see a lot of space in between plants and it's kind of discouraging in a way because you want to see it full and lush and beautiful. And that's where annuals come in and just do such a wonderful job just um, making the area gorgeous. Um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of some of the new stuff coming out, some new perennials and some new annuals. And we will show you updates later on in the season too, to show you how everything has come along. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.